Hey guys, this is On Track GP. I'm Jamie Chambers, and today we are going to be looking at the top 10 biggest deficits between F1 world champions and their teammates. The form of Sergio Perez has caused alarm bells with F1 fans and possibly Red Bull, but how close is he to having the biggest deficit to a world champion teammate? Once considered to be an outside threat for the 2023 Drivers' Championship, a series of clumsy races and underperformance has put the Red Bull driver over 200 points behind world champion Max Verstappen. As things stand, Perez has 48% fewer points than Verstappen, but he will still have to go some way to being the lowest performing teammate in the sport's history. For this top 10, we have compared world champions and the teammates they raced against in the same title winning season. We have discounted many of the seasons where multiple drivers were used in the second car, for example, Michael Schumacher's teammates in the 1994 season, but included the years where a driver pairing lasted in a consistent run of races for most of the season. In instances where the second driver missed one-off races, we have only calculated the points totals where both drivers participated in the race. The drivers in this top 10 are measured by how far behind in percentage their teammates' points total they were due to F1's point system changing over time. Number 10, Eugenio Castellotti versus Juan Manuel Fangio. Ferrari, 1956, 75% points behind. In 1955, Ferrari's young charger Castellotti joined the F1 grid and achieved third place in the championship, racing both Lancias and Ferraris. In 1956, he joined Ferrari alongside Peter Collins to compete with F1 legend Fangio, who won this fourth of his five drivers' titles. Castellotti struggled with reliability and only achieved one podium finish, but tragically died during a test session in 1957. Number nine, Richie Ginther versus Graham Hill. BRM 1962, 76% behind. In 1962, Ginther joined BRM to help them with their first world championship. Hill won four times while Ginther had two podium finishes. However, only one driver's results counted towards the Constructors' Championship. So BRM claimed that accolade. Ginther faced incidents and reliability issues, but his results improved the following year with him finishing level one points with Hill in 1963. Number eight, Derek Daly versus Keke Rosberg. Williams, 1982, 78% behind. In the early 80s, there were numerous one-sided driver battles, including Daly's attempt to match 1982 drivers champion Rosberg. The Williams team started with Rosberg and Carlos Reutemann, but Reutemann retired after just two races. Daly was drafted in for round five and stayed until the end of the season. Despite subtracting Rosberg's points from the start of the season when Daly didn't race for the team, their 12-race stint was a one-sided affair. Daly managed lower point scores in a hotly contested year. Number seven, Hector Reback versus Nelson Piquet. Brabham, 1981. 78% behind. Reback, a former driver who struggled against Piquet, joined the Brabham team in 1980 and was retained alongside Piquet for 1981. Piquet won his first title with 50 points while Reback struggled to finish in the top 10 and only managed a fourth place Grand Prix result. He left the sport at the end of the season despite his struggles with Piquet. Number six, Ricardo Patrici versus Nelson Piquet. Brabham, 1983, 78% behind. In 1982, Patrice was a promising driver for the team, but his second season was marked by a lack of pace and reliability. PK won three Grand Prix wins and the Drivers' Championship win, while Patrice only achieved one victory and one podium finish. Despite his potential for more success, Patrice was dropped in 1984 and took several years to return to a front-running car. Number five, Nicky Lauda versus Alain Prost. McLaren, 1985, 81% behind. Perhaps a surprising name to include on this list, but the career of Formula One legend Nicky Lauda ended with minimal glory, and the three-time world champion was thoroughly overshadowed by hotshot Alain Prost. Lauda had pipped Prost to the 1984 title the season before, but the young Frenchman took command of the McLaren team in 85 and took five wins en route to a driver's title. There was only one victory for Lauda in his season, and the Austrian fended off Prost to take victory at the Dutch Grand Prix. However, retirements and an injury meant Lauda just took 14 points all season. 
Number four, Mike Spence versus Jim Clark. Lotus, 1965, 82% behind. Widely regarded as a driver that could have achieved more in F1, Spence's first unenviable task was to try and match number one driver Clark, with the 1965 being his first full season in the sport. With Clark taking six wins, Spence claimed one podium and just 10 points all season, but was unlucky to miss out on points on numerous occasions. He developed a fine racing driver, taking wins in sports cars, but a crash during a race in the Indy 500 claimed his life in 1968. Number three, John Miles versus Jochen Reint, Lotus 1970, 96% behind. In the late 1960s, Miles became a prominent Lotus driver, rising through the ranks through Formula 3 and Formula 2 championships. He became a test driver for an experimental four-wheel drive Lotus Formula 1 car in 1969 and joined the team in 1970. Despite Lotus's focus on Wright and Hill, Miles focused on developing the car. However, he struggled to match Wright's pace, leading to his death at round 10 of the championship. Miles left the team after only claiming two points in the same number of races. Number two, Trevor Taylor versus Jim Clark. Lotus, 1963, 98% behind. The formidable combination of Jim Clark and Lotus was an often unstoppable force in Formula One, and the 1963 season was one of the most dominant in the sport's history. In a season where only the best six races out of nine counted towards the points total, Clark's six wins meant he achieved the maximum allowable points in a championship. However, teammate Taylor managed just one solitary point all season. Unfortunately, a series of big accidents had taken their toll on Taylor's confidence, which resulted in worsening performances in 1963 and triggered Lotus owner Colin Chapman to suggest Taylor take a sabbatical from Formula One. And number one, David Walker versus Emerson Fittipaldi. Lotus, 1972, 100% behind. In a season where Fittipaldi was claiming the first of his two world championship titles with two races to spare, Walker claimed the undesirable accolade of being the only driver to score zero points with a world champion teammate. The gritty Australian had impressed in his first title winning Formula 3 season in 1971 and showed sufficient potential in a one-off Grand Prix to be given a chance at Lotus for the 1972 season. However, it was clear from the outset that Fittipaldi was to be the number one driver, and the lack of equality in the team soon frustrated Walker, even though the Lotus there completely justified throwing all their weight behind title-challenging Fittipaldi. A dispute in the team meant he was dropped for two races and replaced by Swedish driver Rainer Vissel, but he was unable to get any closer to dominating the Brazilian. Thanks for joining us as we revisited some gripping chapters of Formula One, looking at some of the widest gulfs between teammates in the sport's history. From legendary rivalries to challenging seasons, these stories remind us of the fierce competition and dynamics within teams. Can you think of more disparities between teammates during seasons? Let us know in the comments below what you think, and remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. This has been On Track GP. I've been Jamie Chambers. Keep the pedal to the metal, and I'll catch you in the next video.